Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I want to show you how I interfaced my gas heater with the help of a Raspberry Pi. So I'm not going to use the Raspberry Pi Free which I which I used in the first video, but I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi Zero with wireless. And I'm going to con I'm going to connect a relay board to it in order to show you how to write a Python script and how to write a PHP page in order to control the relays on the board through the internet using your smartphone or your laptop or your tablet or any device that has access on the internet. So enough talking, let's get to it. So as you can see, 5 volts goes to the VCC on the relay board, ground goes to ground and input 1, 2, 3 and 4 goes to pin to GPIO 6, 13, 19 and 26. That's how you wired it. Now that we know that, we can start installing the Raspbian on the Pi. Let's get to it. So as seen in the previous videos, all you have to do is go to the internet, download a fresh Raspbian image for the Pi. So we're gonna write Raspbian and uh, we're gonna download a fresh image for the Pi. I'm gonna download the light one because I don't have any any keyboard adapter or uh, HDMI adapter for the Raspberry Pi Zero since it uses a micro one. So once the image has been downloaded, you can use SD formatter or any type of software to format the card. Just remember to delete the label and be careful which drive you are formatting. Delete the label, format it, click yes. After that is done, you can take, you can open a Win32 disk imager, select the image where you just download it on the, on the drive, select the drive on which you want to write it, click write, click yes, and this is gonna take a while. Of course, I'm gonna speed up the videos so you won't wait like I do. Once the image has been written on the SD card, just get the SD card out of your PC, mount it in the Pi, plug the power cable in and leave it for like 10 minutes. After that you can take the card out of the Pi and uh, you will have to insert it in a Linux machine. I'm gonna leave a link in the description how you can go about that if you don't have a Linux machine. So we insert the card in the Linux machine, we open the root file system, we go to Etsy, VPI underscore supplicant, open in terminal, we're gonna write sudo nano vpa underscore supplicant dot conf and we're gonna edit this file and we're gonna write network equals brackets ssid equals quotes your router's name and uh, underneath we're gonna write psk equals quotes your router's password afterwards we're gonna save the file with control x and y close everything up open the boot file system on the card select open in terminal and now we're gonna create an empty file here so we're gonna write sorry sudo nano ssh type in your password you can put a few empty spaces, click Ctrl X, save it and close everything up and insert the card back into the Pi. Now you can log in through SSH on the Pi. So we're gonna log in to SSH using your Pi's IP address. So you're gonna write Pi at whatever IP address you have. Type yes, type the password, the default one is Raspbian. Once you're logged in, we're gonna do some settings. So we're gonna write Raspbian minus config. And the first thing we need to do is to change the password. So we go to the system options, password, and we're gonna type a new password. It won't show anything, but you have to type it twice and you gotta remember it. So type the new password again and the password has been changed successfully. Now we're gonna go to advanced options and expand the file system so that the bike can use the whole SD card. After that, there's one more little thing we need to do. 
we're gonna go to boot options and select console auto login text console automatically automatically logged in as by user once you've done that click finish reboot now select yes and log in again via SSH this way you won't need the keyboard or a monitor so we're gonna write sudo su and we're gonna update the pi so apt minus get update press enter it's gonna take a while depending on which type of pi you're using and now we're gonna type apt minus get upgrade it's gonna prompt you to press y at some point so press y and enter this is gonna take a long long time on the raspberry pi zero i'm gonna speed up the video again once that is done we can now install zip unzip so apt minus get install zip unzip i'm gonna need that later press y and now we're going to install, install Python setup tools and Python pre setup tools. Uh, probably, oh, it is already installed, so never mind. I'm going to put this link into the description so you can get the PyGPIO library. So type wget and that link over there. Now we're going to unzip the file that you just downloaded. So unzip master.zip. Once the file has been unzipped, you can type list to see what what kind of files you have here. So change directory to pygpio minus master. Type make. Again, on the Raspberry Pi Zero, this is going to take some time. Now you have to type make install. So we're going to type make install. Once that is done. You can type pygpiod to start the daemon that's gonna give us access to the GPIO pins. So now we're gonna put this into the cron tab, type cron tab minus e, press 1, and at the end of the file type at reboot sudo home py pygpio minus master pygpiod. Control X, save it, and you can reboot now. Now we're gonna install a couple of things. So sudo minus 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 apt get sudo apt minus get install Apache 2 press Y let it go through the whole installation and now we're gonna type sudo service Apache 2 status to see if it's working so it's working, press Ctrl C. Now we can check it in the browser as well, see if it's working, so it's working. And now we're gonna modify some files and install the PHP. So sudo apt-get install. I'm gonna leave the video to go slow when I write this kind of thing so you can see what I'm doing. So sudo apt-get install PHP lib apache2 minus mod minus php so minus y and press enter and this will install the php on the apache server so once this is done we're gonna write sudo nano etsy sudo -ers and we're gonna edit this file so we can give the apache access to some folders so ww minus data all equals all no password all click ctrl x y and save it so now we're going to change directory to the apache folder so cd var www html type sudo su uh, now we're going to restart the apache server so ser service apache2 restart because we just installed the php once that is done you can list to see what 
what we have here in the in this folder. So remove index that HTML. We're not gonna need it. List. We check the browser and we click refresh. It's not gonna display anything now. So back in the terminal, we're gonna write some files to control the relay. So nano one.pi. I'm gonna speed up the video. You can pause it to copy the files if you need to. This is for GPIO number six. And we're gonna write four files for every GPIO pin. So for 6, 13, 19, and 26. So now if we write python1.vi, the relay is on. If we write it again, the relay is off. So we're gonna edit this file again. And we're just gonna change the pin. So now we're gonna 13, 19, and the next one will be 26. Once that is done, we can test all the files to see if they work. And they work. And now we're gonna write a page to control them. So you can pause the video again to copy everything that's on the screen. I'm not gonna post this stuff in the video description because for some reason YouTube doesn't let you use angle brackets in the video description. I don't know why, I guess it's a security issue or something. I'm guessing that's it. I'm not sure. If you guys know, leave your thoughts in the comment below. So now if you click refresh, we have four buttons. They don't do anything yet because we have to interface them with the Python scripts that we just made. So we're gonna tidy up a bit, put some spaces between the buttons and we're gonna write the PHP part which controls the relays. This is very annoying to write since I'm not doing this every day and I'm not really fast at typing like, like other people. So you can pause the video at the end and copy everything if you want to do this project yourself. Just remember if you get anything wrong in the PHP section, the page is not gonna work. It's either not gonna display anything or it's not gonna it's not gonna work at all. Or you press the button and the button's on the screen and nothing happens. So once this is done, we can check if it's working and it's not working. Why is that not working? We probably made a mistake in the in the in the page, so let's check it out. Oh, here it is. Okay, click to refresh, and now as you can see, everything works as it's supposed to. Uh, I imported time in the Python scripts, and you'll see why right now. We're gonna write another script, we're gonna mo modify the script, and we're gonna write another four files out of the first four one. Four one. Oh, I made a mistake here. As you can see, I'm, um, I I misplaced the names, so I corrected that. So in this situation, any other relay, when you press a button, it's gonna stay on for five seconds and it's gonna go up for five seconds. Now I'm uh, writing another four buttons on the page, and I also use some font for the buttons to make it to make them larger so it's easier to see now for the PHP part just the same thing just the numbers are different and the files that it's accessing are different the rest is the same so it's basically two line for every button once that is complete everything should work as expected. So now we have eight buttons. Uh, the last one should be four. Let me check that. So five seconds relay one, five seconds relay two, five seconds relay three, and five seconds relay four. I'm gonna put them on and afterwards it's gonna put them off. I'm gonna put the link in the video description for everything that you need to install. I, here I'm modifying the files because uh, these relays are need to be pulled low in order to stay on. I didn't know that. 
and I modified the Python scripts. So, thank you for so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and uh, hope I'll see you soon. Leave your thoughts in the comments or your suggestions with something you'd like to see. Thank you.